Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wedding to Wife podcast. I am your host, Jennifer Allen, and we are back today with a topic that is truly near and dear to me. Um, I'm here with my guest, Nikki, and we will be discussing the importance of counseling pre, post, in in between, just, just all of it. Nikki, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Well, I first want to start out before we get into um, the importance of counsel of, of counseling. Tell us how long you've actually been married and how the two of you met and got to the stage that you're at now. Okay. Well, I have been with my wonderful husband for 19 years. Okay. So <laughs> we she was, met. So she was a baby. Since I was a baby, we met at the age of 19. <laughs> you're gonna like this. We met on DallasPeeps.com. Ooh, girl, we met on MySpace. What you talking about? <laughs> yes. So this was, you know, pre-Tinder, pre-dating yeah. websites. The goal wasn't to meet a boo, but you you end up meeting a boo. And, you yeah. know, life happens. So we met online. The first three years of our relationship was actually long distance because I was in the military. So okay. he was here in Texas, which where he was the whole time, and I was in Montana. So it wasn't until I got out of service that I came home and we were able to pursue our relationship full time in person. So we've been okay. married now for 10 years. Okay. So with that long distance piece, how was that? Uh, well, it was great in my opinion because okay. I had a great time. I was living it up, flying home every 30, 45 days. Whenever I got a few days of leave, I would use it and mm -hmm. come home. Um, but come to find out later that I, I had a different view of what our relationship was. I was mm. in a relationship, not by myself, but when I was there, I was single to him. And so when I would come mm. home, it was all good. But when I was in Montana, I was single so he was single and that's not the view that I had gotcha so in your eyes we we we, we together 365 we booze right there is no one yeah else. like that's why I'm flying home so often to see you you know right. um so that was a hard revelation it didn't come out until later like okay. so I felt like the first three years almost didn't count because to him we weren't mm. together but to me we very much were so that that came out of counseling. <laughs> so, mm, you don't okay. know what you don't know, right? So you don't yeah. know what you don't know. And that applies to so many things, especially being in a relationship, because people think just because you are around somebody every day, you still don't know them because people have the mm -hmm. right to change mm -hmm. like the wind. You can right. wake up tomorrow and decide like you y'all went vegan, right? So. Mm -hmm. You can wake up and decide, I'm not eating meat anymore. And your spouse can be like, well, what you mean? Wait a second. We we, right. we eat chicken we up over here. Here. What are you talking about? <laughs> Why are you saying this? But people have the right to decide that they want to change. Right. So when you got back home, how did the proposal go when once it happened? Oh, it was cute. So our first date, actually, I came home on leave and we met for the first time at AMC 30 in the middle of the circle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was our Very familiar. Spot. So um, being that we met at the movies, uh, movie dates and going to different movie theaters is very much part of our date persona. It's what we do. Okay. It's what we like. We do it on our anniversary. So the proposal happened at AMC 30. We watched mm -hmm. Yes Man with Jim Carrey and he put mm -hmm. the ring inside of the popcorn. And mm -hmm. when I pulled it out, he, he leaned over and whispered to me, you have to say yes. Because the movie was Yes Man. So yeah. I was Aww. very tickled by that. Yeah. That was very, that was, he, he put some thought into that. He put thought into it, but he made it very low key. So if I would have turned him down, there was no embarrassment because nobody knew. Yeah. So, so was that your dream proposal? I did not know what my dream proposal was. Okay. I, I just knew I wanted to be married. I didn't have this grand idea of what a proposal was supposed to be because I had never okay. seen it in real life. Mm, okay. If that makes okay. you see the things on TV, yeah. but you don't think that's really how it's gonna go down, right? Right, right. It's like nobody's slow clapping. Nobody right. is right. And now in this age of social media, everything is, oh, it has to be this big, huge, yeah. grand, over the top gesture, which 
which is fine, but it's also fine for people who don't desire that. Like that's okay too. Exactly. So y'all get engaged. And then how long did you, were you engaged before you got married? (laughs) Uh, Well, we were engaged from 2008 to 2012. That's when we finally tied the knot. I broke off the engagement once during that long engagement period because things started to come out of the cracks that I wasn't aware of. It wasn't new, but it was new to me. So I, you know, in a moment of hurt, called off everything, sold my dress, actually got scammed when I sold my dress. I sent that wedding dress to Africa girlfriend. Didn't get no, it was a spoof email from PayPal that I had received payment. So I rushed Mm. to the mailbox and sent it off at the post office and got zero dollars for that dress but oh my god neither here nor there that's what happens when you act in haste and anger you Ooh. make snap decisions <laughs> yeah definitely because i would have snapped at that point yeah so lesson learned but um it was a long engagement but i felt like it was necessary because we were we were still babies right we mm-hmm. we got engaged at 23 right after having a baby um mm. emotions were high hormones were high and we still were in the process of learning each other. Because like I said, that that three years we were together, 2004 to 2007, I was gone. And I came right. home in April. I was pregnant in October. So we were very mm. much a, a very fresh relationship. And right. when we got engaged, it was like, that is the natural progression of a relationship. You have a baby, you get married. Usually it's the other way around. But right. he wanted to make an honest woman out of me. So Mm -hmm. we got engaged, but I knew, and he knew also that we weren't ready to immediately get married financially or otherwise. So it took a while, but we finally got married in 2012. So after you got married, at what point did y'all start going to counseling? 2020. 2020. The (laughs) pandemic brought out a lot (laughs) of, uh, it, it brought out a lot of things for people because it slowed everything down. It did. And when you're no longer moving at this fast pace of, I got to drop the baby off here. I got to go. My kids have practice over here. I got to go to work. We got a meeting. We got this. We got that. And you literally are just there. You realize, is this what it's going to be like for the rest of our life? Like now that I can see us, right? Because the rose colored glasses are off Mm -hmm. and now we're in the thick of it. And it's like, hmm. So was there anything in particular that prompted like, okay, we need to go to counseling? Uh, Behavioral changes in me. Okay. I was very much, well, just a little backstory. I've been a student since I came home from the military. I became Mm. a medical assistant. I became a phlebotomist. I was going to nursing school. The school shut down. I redirected Mm. and went to UNT. Um, Found out I was pregnant, redirected, went to UTD because it was down the street. Mm -hmm. So I've been a student for always. I've been working and going to school. I graduated Mm -hmm. in 2009, fall 2009. So I was just a few months off of graduating, getting ready to gear up for what am I going to do next? And then boom, COVID shut everything down. Everyone's Mm -hmm. stuck at home, quarantined. Mm -hmm. So instead of me going to class, going to work, having this sorority event, doing that, I was just home. Right. And I didn't know what to do with that (laughs) Mm. because my husband very much took on the role of, because his job has been remote since like 2015. So he's always been. And Mm -hmm. so the primary housekeeper is him. Everything that needs to be fixed he is perfecting recipes I've never heard of, especially since we went vegan. He became the chef of the house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he's been doing everything at home. That's his comfort. I'm sitting at home and I'm going crazy because I'm right. out. I'm used to be, what, what's next? What's the next event? What's the next social? Yeah. And that created static because I should be at home, loving on my husband, mm-hmm. you know, doting on my daughter, giving my family time because I'm finally graduated. They have been waiting on me to be free from all of these other things that have been pulling me mm-hmm. in every direction. And when there were no more things to pull me, I was going stir crazy. Mm. <laughs> so it, it kind of brought a shift of, are you happy? Like, do you want to be home with me? 
And mm. I was almost offended that he felt that way, but I couldn't see the right. way he saw it. So counseling was important for me to kind of st- take a step back and see our relationship from his point of view, not mine. Okay. Because he's been supportive all these years. Yeah. And, and now I'm finally home and I'm trying to go, go, go again. And it's like, what the hell, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's hard because... When you are in this realm of go, 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 when you are very goal driven, all you see is the next goal, the next goal, the next goal. And it's almost like, I'll be happy when I accomplish. It's like only your future self deserves this type of like happiness. Like I'll be happy when I get, when I finish school, I get this type of job, making this Mm -hmm. type of money with this type of freedom, then I'll, I'll be happy. So it's always like, your current self doesn't deserve the happiness. Only your future self deserves it once you get to this certain point. Mm -hmm. But then we get there and it's like, okay, well, now I got to get somewhere else. It's it's, it's a never ending rat race. Right. And imposter syndrome is real too. Because when you you get a certain place... And you feel like, okay, I'm here. Now it's like I'm in the door, but now I feel like I have to prove myself more as to why I deserve to be here in this room with everybody else. Like you get your bachelor's degree and it's like, this is not enough. Now I need a master's. And you know, you're working on your master's and you're like, okay, which doctorate program am I going to choose? Like just sit still and enjoy the fruits of all the labor that you went through to get here. And so it... it yeah, it took a, a a big reality check to step back and just actually live in that moment that I finally created for myself. But imposter syndrome is something that I could I could literally talk for hours about because yeah. that is that is my life. Like <laughs> people say, like, oh, you know, you're you're doing these great things and you're doing that, and I'm just like, I mean, I guess I, I don't really. I'm like, am I? You know, am I really, you know, doing something that's so spectacular? Because to me, I'm constantly feeling like, well, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. But it's like, well, in 2017, when you first started your business, you weren't here. And so you wanted to be here and now you're here. And then that's still not enough. You want to be somewhere else. And so I have to just constantly remind myself, like, you're living in an answered prayer. Mm-hmm. Enjoy it. Yeah. You know, and it's it's difficult. So how how did y'all choose a counselor? In a moment of panic, and I felt like I was literally about to lose my husband. Girl, I just went to the Google machine and I was like, there's mm. counseling near me. And I just found somebody. Girl, they weren't even in network. I paid out of pocket. I didn't care. I was like, how soon mm. can you see us? It was yeah, it was that deep because I didn't realize how unappreciated he really felt like I sat back for years and just supported you through losing jobs and switching school programs and I never Mm -hmm. said anything the bills have always been paid you finally graduate you're finally where you wanted to be and Mm -hmm. it's not enough are we not enough you know and Mm -hmm. and You know, just my daughter, hey, can we hang out today? And I was so tired. You know, you have, luckily I had a job that was very supportive. So I would go to work at eight, clock in for about 30 minutes, leave, go to UTD, take a class, come back to work. And on days Mm. that I had that class, I had to stay longer. So when I finally did get home after work, school, and any sorority event that may have taken place on campus that day, I just wanted to lay down. So I was like neglecting my husband, neglecting my daughter. And then when I finally graduated, it's like, oh, now we get her. And I right. still was unavailable. And I didn't realize how unavailable I was to my family. Mm. So, yeah, it was it was totally a me thing. And counseling brought so much out that I wouldn't have even thought was a problem. But, again, you don't okay. know what you don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So do, do y'all still go to counseling now? Absolutely. Okay. In, this is an ongoing of, thing. Yeah. Instead of instead of weekly, it's like monthly check ins. Okay. To make sure okay. that we are continuing to communicate properly and effectively with each other, because baby, I thought we were communicating. It was the furthest from it. <laughs> mm. I, I, you know, in going to counseling, they have you take these tests, these personality tests, and okay. 
you you hear about people's love languages, mm-hmm. but it's so much deeper than a love language. You need to know communication styles, personality styles. Um, I laughed when I was watching. Um, I don't know if you've watched yet, but the ultimatum, the queer love one. And I'm, I'm probably not gonna watch it, so go ahead and tell what, what whatever you're gonna say, <laughs> baby. You have people you, it, from the outside. It's always easy to see, but you have right, people of course. whose communication style is avoidant, and you throw stuff at the TV. And you're like, why the hell won't you just talk yeah. to her? And then you, you have someone tapping on the shoulder talking about that's you. That's, that's you right there, bro. That's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to argue. I need time to calm down because, A, yeah. I don't want to say something I can't take back. And, B, I just don't want to yell and be disrespectful. So let me sit in this for a minute. But Same. my sit in it is, let's just calm down and then it'll go away. But it doesn't and then go we can away. just we can just move on. That that definitely Let's just is me. Make up. <laughs> yeah, my husband is a... I want to talk about it, guy. Yeah. I want to talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's let's talk about it. And I'm just like, I mean, is it that big of a deal? Right. You know, it's like, to, to me, it's not that big of a deal. Like, a lot of things, he says I'm very nonchalant about things. And it's like, I'm not trying to be nonchalant about anything. Mm-hmm. I just don't feel like it's worth the commotion that is going to come from it. Like, this is going to get dragged out and it's like, why? I don't want to do this. Like, I don't, I don't want to argue. I don't, I don't want to fuss. I just want us to like, act like this didn't happen. And we, and, and I realized that that wasn't healthy. Right. So we, we've also had to experience counseling because yeah. Um, that's not healthy and you cannot sub- make the other person suppress how they feel to make you feel better. You cannot make somebody else shut down their feelings because you don't want to talk about it. Exactly. It's not fair. And, you know, a big problem that we had, this is a family show or can I cuss? <laughs> Yo, we can, oh, you, you can fucking cuss. Okay. <laughs> well, a problem. And I knew this about myself or our relationship because we Mm -hmm. called it out way before counseling, but we were just like, we have a tendency to fuck things away. We'll know Mm. something's wrong, but we won't talk about it. We'll kiss and make up, right? We'll we'll fuck it away. And then the next morning, it's like it didn't happen until it comes up again. Until it happens again. And so counseling forces you to learn where you're messing up as far as communicating because okay. I always said early in our relationship I was like the sex is good we're great but if that ever fails us mm-hmm. then we're gonna have problems and mm. when you're emotionally unavailable it changes your libido it changes oh, 100%. your desire so then it did begin to affect our sexual relationship and it's like oh shit now we do have a problem yeah yeah and people yeah. don't understand that when you your libido dropping yes it has to do with your age yes it has to do with a combination of things but when you're checked out it it it, it doesn't matter you of course you can have sex right it's just like okay yeah come come on but are you craving it are you into it are you like man, I can't wait to get home. And then once you notice that change, you know, most, most people, sex typically isn't the first thing that goes. It's kissing, it's hugging, it's like small things. Mm -hmm. And that over time just kind of build up to where now it's just like, did we hug today? Did we kiss today? Like, did we even touch each other today? And then when the end of the night comes and it's like, you want to have sex? And it's like, all right. Yeah, so in person. Just... Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like... like a task at this point. Yeah. Or if you it's say like... it like that, I don't want it. And now you fuck Right. <laughs> and now you argue and you like, I didn't even say no. I just said if you wanted to do it, we, we, we could do it. And now it's a problem. I turned so, up and put my butt cheek on. You know what Listen, that <laughs> you knew what that meant. I just got out the shower. You knew what that meant. You knew it was finna go down in here today. I didn't and have on the boomer. We... I had on the silk robe. You know that and... means it's go time. <laughs> And now here we are fussing about something. And it is, you know, I offer premarital coaching to my Jesse Lope clients um, that wanted 
um, I became a certified SIMBIS facilitator because I noticed that some of the couples we were marrying were getting divorced. And owning an elopement and microwave and planning company, just elope.net, um, you know, yeah, look, 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 little plug, you know. <laughs> We deal with couples who sometimes they're like, oh, yeah, we just met three three weeks ago. We just met three months ago. That and is I'm like, like right. and I'm like, okay, you know. That's all rose-colored glasses right there. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then I look up and they're, they're like, I, you know, they end up adding me on social media after the weddings. And then next thing I know, I see that they're divorced. And that was like really fucking with me because you're I'm trying to like, feel responsible, not responsible, uh, but you feel, yes, but yeah, yes, it makes you feel some kind yeah. of way. I'm like, oh my God. So I'm like, okay, I became a premarital coaching facilitator mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, I'm going to start offering this. And during the sessions, I started to notice that like most people need to do premarital coaching before they ever get engaged. Like that's my take on it because there are levels. I I truly feel like there are levels to breaking up. If you are in dating someone and y'all break up, it's like, Oh, me and my boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, we just broke up. Right. But then you get engaged and it's like, now you are calling off an engagement. And there's so many then, more people involved. Then you go through with it and you get married. And now you're staying because you want to save yourself from the embarrassment of getting a divorce. When in reality, all of this could have been avoided if these... T- why wait? Why go out and buy? Why go out and buy a ring that's worth thousands of dollars? Then decide... Okay, now we need to go sit down and talk to the lady so we can <laughs> so we can have these tough conversations and learn all these things about each other and and how to deal with conflict and how to deal with communicating before we get married. You should have did that before you dropped out and bought and bought that ring. Like mm-hmm. these are things that need to happen before you ever get engaged i am a huge advocate for premarital counseling and marriage counseling and individual counseling i yeah. think that it is a necessity for everyone because we all got shit like nobody's above it nobody we we all hold on to things whether we realize that we're holding on to them or not right. and getting married and having kids it just becomes this thing because I feel like me and my husband are probably, of course, it's just my opinion, but I feel like we're probably the most compatible people in the whole wide world. I feel like we got the best marriage in the whole wide world, right? Because uh, that is my, that is my me and my me and my man. Okay. Right. But our parenting styles are two totally different types. Mm-hmm. We have all boys, three boys. My husband parents like a man. And I don't know no other way to explain that other than he parents parents (laughs) his boys like a man. And I'm like, why is you talking to my baby so rough? (laughs) Why is you handling my baby so rough? Right. And, And it does not matter how compatible we are and how great we are he is still entitled to be however he wants. Like his style of parenting does not have to match mine. Right. We have the same values. We have the same morals and how we want to raise our family. But you, but, but your tone <laughs> with, with my baby is too much. Are you the gentle parent? A, a thousand percent. A thousand percent. I did not think that I did not think I was going to be. I didn't think I was going to be a gentle parent. My mama was not a gentle parent. She was busting your ass. And so I did not think I was going to be a a gentle parent. I, I embrace having conversations with my children, talking to them, explaining things to them. I don't get offended if you ask me why. 
It turns them it, into functional people. <laughs> correct. 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 They know how, how to you communicate and express themselves properly. How do you expect your children to grow up and be these strong and advocate for themselves when they can't even have a voice at home? That's exactly why I gentle parent proudly. I don't care. People, didn't you get the belt? The belt, the yeah. switch, the extension cord. I got all of it. Yeah. However, comma, that doesn't mean I want to pass that down. We breaking generational right. curses and Correct. changing things over here. I get the same yeah. results by yeah. talking it out. My daughter will tell me if she disagrees with me, but she's so respectful that how can you be mad? How can you right. be mad? And that's okay that you disagree. <laughs> like if, if they say, hey, can I... Can I do whatever and I and I, and I say no? And then they they say why? Oh, I don't I don't and I I don't even just give them the because I said so why? And I also had to catch myself because if they ask me why and I truly didn't have a valid reason for saying no, then I would say yes. Right. Like, Mama, can I have this morning? Jackson said, Mama, can I make me some hot chocolate? I was about to say no. Now, what was I finna say no? Why that boy can't have no hot chocolate? You probably and just mama, didn't feel like cleaning up a mess later. And that's exactly <laughs> what, what it was. Mm -hmm. But I said, you know, I had to stop and pause. I said, you know what? Yes, you can have it. Because the last time he made some, he cleaned up his mess. He took care of it. But it's like, don't say no just to say no. Like, okay. I could not stand that. Because my mama... If she wanted to move, she didn't feel like being bothered. Mama, can I do it? No. Now, I wouldn't dare ask her why, you right. know, because that, that wasn't a thing. But it's like, I don't, I'm okay with you asking me why and me giving you an explanation why, but we're not going to go back and forth. Like, right. I mean, I just told you why. Like, so we, we ain't, this ain't an argument. Like we ain't it was, about it was, to be it up was stay in a child's place when I was younger, but it's like, I yeah. have an opinion too, though. <laughs> I have an opinion and I would love, you know, and, and we asked them like, Hey, you know, what do y'all think of this? You know, what do y'all want to do? Blah, 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 blah. And I think that's so important because you want your children to be comfortable speaking up for themselves, but they don't even know how, right. Where are they learning that? How? <laughs> Not at school. <laughs> no. They're learning all the cuss words and all the sexual things, Lord. That's another topic. But school, yeah. school is not where they learn the important things. School yeah. is where they learn how to test and among other things. But yeah. And we we, we just try to, you know, <laughs> it's hard having kids. It's hard. Everything is hard, right? So everything in some capacity is hard. It's hard being married. It's hard being single. It's hard having kids. It's hard not being able to have kids. Mm -hmm. It's hard struggling when you get the kids. Like there's always going to be some type of hard. And I have to remind people around me at, at times that just because my situation in your opinion is better than yours doesn't mean I don't have valid gripes about certain things. Right. So it's like, well, what are you complaining about? You got a good husband. He take care of y'all. You live, you bought a house. You drive, you drive this. You got your own business. Like, what do you have to complain about? They see you flying, but they haven't seen you fall and scrape your knees. Like, we don't, like we don't share <laughs> everything. We're transparent enough, but baby, you know how many failures... I had one big failure and it's funny because it just popped up in my Facebook memories. Um, when I got hired on to, in, in my opinion, at that time, it was the best offer I had at that time mm -hmm. at Goldman Sachs. The, you know, it was like, I remember you got that job. $17 more than what I was making. So a huge mm. increase when I tell you. Right. And I had the offer. I did the background check, went, got my little fingerprints done. I know I'm not a criminal. So I'm like, I right. got this job. I done told my husband. He done told his friends. We bragging. We, baby, when they rescinded that offer, <laughs> mm. because the dates on my resume, they're like, I've the heard that. So they are like, oh the my God. FBI says, I, I said I left the job in April of, of 2011. And it was like, I left in 
February. It was like a two month difference or some shit. And they were like, mm. call for rescinded. You lied. I was like, I didn't lie, but wow. Trust me, I fixed my resume after that. But yeah, it was such a blow to my ego, to my self esteem, because I was so ready. I was so fed up with the job I was at because mm -hmm. they knew I was months away from graduating. And I had gone into my boss's office and asked, I was like, I've been passed up for several promotions. I've been mm -hmm. training people that you hired in place of me for said promotion. And then they quit. Like it's a slap in the mm. face that you're not utilizing me properly because I don't right. have this piece of paper that says I know how to do my job, even though I've been here. Right. For X amount of years. So I was like, once I get this degree, is there room for me to move up? Is there? And they're right. like, no. So that's why I started looking for another job prior to graduating. I started moving mm -hmm. before I even got my degree because they knew I was mm -hmm. about to graduate. So neither here nor there. But when that offer got rescinded, that was a huge blow to my ego. And that was the mm. first time that I saw individual counseling since I'd gotten out of the military. Because I was anxious, girl. I was praying. I was, I went to... I think I went to three different stores buying up just different crystals and sage and, mm. and praying and meditating. And I was so out of my element. I was having to listen to calming sounds on YouTube and shit because I was just anxious because I was mm. waiting on that background check to come back, waiting on right. a start date. And because I knew I had the job, but I felt it in my gut that something wasn't right. Something was up. So mm -hmm. Every day that passed that I didn't get a start date, I was like, what is taking so damn long? So right. I was I was more anxious than I've ever been in my life, girl. Throwing up, just shaking and shit because I was unsettled. <laughs> and that was my mm. discernment telling me, maybe you should right. just be okay with this not happening because... Right. It wasn't happening. <laughs> mm. But that also, you know, played a part in my relationship and him just being so caring and so there for me and like, you know, it's your husband seems we're... very calm. He's the opposite of me. <laughs> <laughs> he seems very, very calm. Very very calm. Very calming. And so when he notices changes in my behavior, he notices it before I do. He's like, Right. You didn't paste this house like three times. So I was like, what? Yeah. I just thought I went to get water. He was like, you got up twice before coming back with anything. I was mm. like, oh, okay. <laughs> mm. but it's, it's things like you think you know each other because you've been together for so many years. But there's so many things you don't know that you don't know about that person. Right. I didn't know he had traumas. I had no idea mm. about things that happened to him in his childhood that makes him tick that makes him the way he is because mm -hmm. it's questions that I never asked when we met at the age of 19. It's right. Things you don't talk about. <laughs> right. Um, you don't know those probing questions to get to like different things. You're just what you like to do. Oh, okay. Right. You want to go to the movies? <laughs> right. It was so surface level. Like I knew I liked him. I knew I wanted him to be my boyfriend. I knew we went together, but mm -hmm. all that extra, like I didn't expect to come home and within six months be pregnant. That wasn't planned. Right. However, comma, if you're not preventing it, you're planning for it. Right. So I guess that's <laughs> definitely because, you know, that pullout method only works so many times. I told him his pullout game was weak. He was like, well, yeah. I've been 15 years and it wasn't so weak, whatever. Neither here nor there. Yeah. Well, I got my second Listen, baby out of him. <laughs> I, yeah, because I'm like, obviously that that flips it around because like we had Maddox and then so we planned to have Maddox. And then when Maddox was 10 months old, we found that we were pregnant with Jackson. That was not planned. I would have just all. passed right on out. That was not planned <laughs> at, at all. And then when Jackson was probably about one. I was like, I want another baby. I'm like, I'm ready. So we would have had like three under three. And Tavares was like, girl, get the fuck away from me. Like, <laughs> another baby? Do we you can't afford the sleep? kids we got. Like, what are, <laughs> what, what are you saying? We are Do you poor. think that, Jennifer? <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> girl, I was, I, it's like the fever just jumped on my back. And I just, mm. I was like, oh my God. So, we did not have Lennox until, so Jackson was born in 2014. In 2015, I was like ready to have another baby. And I did not get pregnant with Lennox. We did not even, another baby wasn't even on the table until 2020. Like I would bring it up every so often 
And then Tavares was like, girl, bye. And I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm too busy trying to, you know, we're trying to, you know, do this, that, and the third. And I would kind of put it out my head. So when the pandemic talk, speaking of the pandemic, when the, <laughs> pand- <laughs> when the pandemic hit, it's like, okay, we in this house all day. We in it doing an up in here bagoosing all mm-hmm. day. And I'm like, I want to have another baby. And Tavares was like, why? He's like, the boy, like, why? He's like, we are, Jackson was in kindergarten. He's like, we just stopped paying for daycare last year. Oh my gosh. That is such a weight. And you just want to put it right back. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, we just stopped paying for daycare last year. He's like, they can actually like sit by themselves and like not need constant, like, somebody to be there with them and he's like I like it the way that it is and like Mm -hmm. that offended the hell out of me because I'm (laughs) like what you mean you don't want to have another baby like why am I having to to damn near beg you to have another kid when old girl over here I ain't gonna say no name is on her like fourth baby and she barely got a place to stay and I'm like, here we are, stable. Oh. <laughs> like, come on. She don't even deserve it. <laughs> she don't even deserve it. She don't even, she don't, she even walk don't. In here. She don't. Listen, that's how I felt for 15 years, just watching all my friends. No offense, right? Yeah, you, right. You did that, okay? <laughs> but watching all my friends just have another baby. And I'm like, I'm yeah. sitting here struggling to get a second one. Yeah. I can't tell you on two hands the number of miscarriages and losses Mm. the only one that I publicly really shared like we had one after going to Jamaica in 2014 I did share Mm -hmm. that but this last one in 2021 like tore me up just got the tattoo the counseling the the meditation the everything to try to just come back centered bought the house a month after closing found that I was pregnant again Mm. and I said nothing until after my birthday I had a confirmation appointment we were over that hump of the first trimester then I just Mm -hmm. I I said I was gonna be extra y'all I did it (laughs) yeah oh I loved it I loved y'all's baby moon that y'all went and took y'all renewed y'all vows like you did all the things because I'm 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 guessing this is it no no more well, I have to have a hysterectomy because part of the problem of having that second one was my body is fighting against everything that I was trying mm. to do between okay. the fibroid tumors, mm-hmm. the one functioning ovary, like everything that could be hostile down there is very much mm-hmm. hostile. So gotcha. it was yeah. hard even making the second one happen. I wasn't supposed to have the first one. So, mm. you know, I was told after I had my appendix removed in high school and um, one of my ovaries was subjected to that <laughs> poison of your your um appendix rupturing so having Mm. that emergency surgery and everything the doctor straight up was and i was 14 at the time so i cared but i didn't care you probably won't be able to have kids if you do it's gonna be kind of hard okay Okay. (laughs) so i told my i told my boyfriend's now husband that i couldn't have kids so imagine his face (laughs) Mm. he like wait a minute girl when i you are in line what you mean you pray (laughs) (laughs) who baby oh yeah that was that was that was fun. So after, you know, getting blessed with the first baby, it became a reality like maybe I can have that family that I wanted. Yeah. And cuz how many kids my, did you want? I really wanted two, but I okay. wanted I wanted boys. So every time you popped mm-hmm. out a boy, I was sitting over here like <laughs> And every time somebody have a girl, my husband was sitting over there with his arms folded because if he could have had it his way, we would have had all girls. Like he Felt like he was destined to be a girl dad. And we have all boys. He he always says, like, they love you so much. I feel like if the house caught on fire, they would come get you and y'all would get outside. And they and they would be like, ain't it some dude that stay with us? And I'm like, I'm like, these kids think the sun rise and set on you. Like they think that you can do anything oh we know daddy can fix it we know daddy can do this daddy knows that daddy knows that i'm like but it's just different yeah imagine me with these two girls over here look just like their daddy they do (laughs) 
<laughs> they do. Yeah, yeah. that is a but thing. I, I did want to mention that I think through all of because I'm a firm believer in what you're supposed to have, you'll have. You might not yes. get it when you think you're supposed to have it, but mm -hmm. if it's meant for you, you'll have it. So yeah. through all my craziness and, and sending us the counseling and learning not just things about my husband that I didn't know, but things about me that I didn't know, how I mm -hmm. deflect, how I really am combative but I think I'm being passive but really mm. I'm, I'm talking shit <laughs> right right in my mind I'm not talking shit but right all that stems from now because I just recently got diagnosed with PTSD gotcha. from my time in the military, military. so mm -hmm. things that I was doing and saying and I think I'm doing nothing wrong it all stems from my past trauma and okay. things that I'm doing and saying to my husband is bringing up his trauma Right. And I didn't know about that trauma. So I'm triggering him. I don't even know it. So right, right. <laughs> counseling really brought out things that I think we needed to talk out, get past, learn how to deal with. Right. Learn how to love each other properly, learn how to communicate properly. And as soon yeah. as we were able to do that, I was able to have that second baby. Mm. I don't think that baby needed to come into the relationship the way it was. Right. So I'm, and it's I'm grateful all, for therapy. I'm very grateful for therapy. <laughs> and you know what? All the time, the years that y'all were together, I think sometimes people feel like it's too late for us. It's it's too late for us. We put these timelines and deadlines on things. And it's like, I would much rather us be married all this time and then finally go to counseling and finally get it right and live the rest of our life in happiness than just do nothing and just think that we can change it and fix it on our on our own. It's like it's not too late, you know. As long as he ain't knocking you upside your head and knocking it bet between the washing machine, like we yeah. could we, we could figure this out. You know what I'm saying? Right. We ain't, ain't. I'm not condoning no domestic disputes. So outside of that, it's like right. you know we can figure we can figure this out, right? And yeah. As long, and you ain't trying to hook up with uh Susie or nothing. Like we ain't as long as the issue is between us, <laughs> we can figure it out, right? So it's like yeah. let's let's work on it. And I, I think that pride also keeps people from seeking help because it's like if you go to counseling, then you're admitting that something's wrong. Pride starts a lot of my fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because. If he said something hurtful, and I have stopped doing this because I'm real good at it. Because, you know, as Gemini, I'm a... Baby, I'm a it's you, go time. I'm going to tell you, I'm a Gemini. I'm sorry. I wouldn't expect anything less from me. But if you hurt my feelings, I promise you I'm going to hurt yours twice in, in yeah. just as hard. So instead of saying, you know what you just said, maybe an hour ago, I had to go simmer on it, but I wanted to let you know that that shit really hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. I would appreciate it if you didn't say it again. Whatever I did to make you feel that way, let's talk it out so we don't get here right. again. Instead, right. immediately, I'm finna hurt your feelings back. I'm finna say yeah. some scuttlebutt nasty shit. Oh. And... <laughs> yeah, because so upset. <laughs> yeah. Because at this point, fight it. It's tit for tat. <laughs> I am right. petty. I am Petty LaBelle, Petty Boots. Yeah, yeah. And that's not healthy yeah, <laughs> in not. a marriage. So yeah, yeah. learning yeah. how to express properly that I'm hurt, even if I'm the one that caused him the hurt, that caused him to hurt my feelings with his words, I have to find the error in what I do or say, mm -hmm. apologize for it, mean it, yeah, and then let him know and not feel guilty because there were so many times where because I hurt his feelings, I felt like I couldn't speak up for myself because it's because of me that he said what he said. Right. But you can't fix anything cowering behind a rock. You have to yeah. say your truth, whether it's yeah. hurtful or not. Like, I understand that you're upset. I don't appreciate what you said, but I understand. I made you mad, right. but that is really hurtful. So right. like, <laughs> you really took it there. Like you took it at like I'm not some slut off the street. That's some yeah. stuff you say to somebody you don't know. Like I'm your yeah. wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's bring but, it back in. Yeah, let's real come on. Yeah. 
Now I'm gonna knock you behind to the washer and dryer. <laughs> Immediately. Now, Immediately. now I'm, you know, because women, we don't always know how to find outlets for our anger. Yeah. yeah. And that's why you see videos of women in parking lot just beating on the men's chest because. Oh yeah. Like keep your hands to yourself. But what I'm so I'm so mad at. So you. mad. What can I do? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Punch the hole in the wall that you gonna yeah. have to fix anyway? <laughs> right, right, so, right, right. And then, and I found in 2021, I found my positive outlet, which was dance. So when I joined Mom Crew, I'm now able mm-hmm. to do something. This physical help keep me in shape and give me something to do. And that is my out of the house, right? Because I was looking for that next thing to yeah. do, and it's something that is not toxic or hurtful or detrimental yeah. to my marriage. I get to serve the yeah. community. I get to dance. I get to include my kids. Yeah. So it's a win-win. <laughs> right. But right. that's that's really what sent me into my spiral because I had nothing to do. And I yeah. wasn't content just sitting at home. I'm not a housewife. I'm a get up and go wife. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, never, um, I never wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. I wanted to be I wanted to be a stay-at-home wife. I didn't want to be a stay-at-home mom. Like, I want your kids to go somewhere else. I I, I want to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And so now that I'm home full-time mm-hmm. running my run, running my business, it's still different because I have to remind my husband oh so gently that I am working. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, pregnant, but I'm I'm working. I'm here, but I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm not just, you know, the kids are gone during the, the day. The baby goes to daycare. Um, and then our, for the summertime, our big boys, they go to, uh, they go to different camps. So they're at like a basketball tra- training camp. And then last week, Maddox went to a uh, web developer coding camp. Jackson's oh, nice. going to a cooking camp. So we, and then they still have their basketball camp that they're doing the entire summer. And then they're doing like their individual camps that they wanted to ex- experience. So it's mm-hmm. like during the day, pretty much from, from 10 to two, there's nobody here, but us. And so, um, he's like, what you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I'm working. And you don't like, be at home flirting with your fine ass coworker like I be doing, girl. Wait, and I, I and I, I'm like, okay, I'm in a, I'm very task driven, <laughs> and so if if you catch me in the middle of something, I I I don't want to stop what I'm what what I'm doing, right? And so that is a struggle because. Tavares will get done with what he's doing. So like he'll he's working, he'll stop, he'll come down here, but I'm in the middle of something. Mm-hmm. And so being task driven, I cannot stop what I'm doing. Like it almost like pains me that you want me, that you want me to stop working on what I'm working on because now you got a couple minutes and you want to come down here. But when you was working, I left you alone to do what you needed to do. Well, you could have right. bothered me. I don't care about you. Oh, girl. <laughs> You you can always come 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 bother me, and so right. I'm just I'm just learning to adjust to us being back in the house together, mm-hmm. full full time, and also like I am I'm a workaholic, but I love it. Like I love to work. Like I love to run my business. I love to do all the things that I do. Like it is not work to me. It is just I could do this all day. Like I could do Jesse Lope, all the things that go along with it all day long and think nothing of it. So I'm just trying to find this balance and realize like, I don't have to be a workaholic to accomplish the things that I need to get done. Like I can, I need to figure out some type of balance. And so I'm working on, I'm working on that because ultimately, you know, if I didn't make a dime, my husband's going to take care of us. And right. so I have to remind myself, like, be present for him, too, because he going to have you regardless. 
And so <laughs> it's a, you know, it's just this constant thing, growth. We'll be married 13 years this month. And so it's like, where did the time go? Like, we it's really, fast it I'm like, we really out here, like, grown with kids and a business and a house and, and a Doesn't dog. Doesn't like, funny? Like, I feel like I'm still growing up and I got two whole children. It's weird. I'm like, <laughs> what? Who said that we could raise people? Like, right. <laughs> I remember so- waiting, sneaking, waiting on my mom to leave so I could have my boyfriend come over and give me some. Like, we ain't got to uh, sneak around no more. It feels weird. <laughs> it is. It is a definite, like, it's wild. It Literally. is definitely wild. But it's an ongoing thing. And I think that's something that, you know, I, I really hope what people take from this episode truly is that going to counseling does not mean that you're that you're admitting that your marriage has a problem is you admitting that above all else you want your marriage and your relationship and yourself to be better like that is what it is it is not a sign of weakness it is a sign of strength to say hey like i don't know all the answers and i don't know how to fix it but i want to fix it and it's that's all that, that matters it's much easier to give in yeah <laughs> And that's literally all that matters. Nikki, thank you so much for coming on today. You're welcome, darling. I appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you who have tuned in to this episode of Wedding to Wife. We have a new episode dropping every Wednesday. You can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere that you listen to a podcast. And of course, catch the video on YouTube and our social media on Instagram at Wedding to Wife Podcast. Nikki, thank you again for coming out. I cannot wait for you all to not only if you're listening to this to see Miss Nikki. Nikki has the best voice. Let me tell y'all something. She sent me a voice note on Facebook one time and I don't even know what we was talking about, but baby, I had to respond back to her and I was like, God damn, like I really want her to just keep talking to me. Because I'm like, I have to play her voice note for my husband. I said, do you hear how soothing her voice is? He's like, girl, what is wrong with you? I'm like, no, seriously. So I, I'm in line of work. <laughs> you, you need to, look, they they paying. They paying for that now. They so I need for to record voice. some voice videos and take some feet pictures. I'm hearing, it's, hey, we'll talk after this. Go get on it, time. listen. <laughs> Listen, I got a friend who do some odd jobs, and so she need, and she don't even show her face. And sis is making is making a coin, so that's ooh, that, ooh, that, you know what that's gonna be a good a good episode. We probably gonna be able to share her face, but we are gonna need her to get on here and tell us how 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 she makes an extra coin or two from 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 time to time. Teach teach me your ways, homegirl. I'm teach so me your ways, <laughs> but seriously, everybody, thank you so much. Wedding to Wife podcast is growing, and I cannot wait to see where it ends up. So, Miss Nikki, thank you again. You're welcome. Super proud of you, Jen. Thank you. All right, everybody. Bye.